I've traveled all over Ontario shooting destination stories for Snowtracks TV. From as far north as Hearst, to as far east as Ottawa, west to Owen Sound, and even as far south as Queensville, I've seen everything this province has to offer. So this season, instead of doing a story on a new spot in Ontario, I figured, why not revisit some of the most interesting and unique places to ride all across the province? See, Ontario is known for three specific attributes when it comes to snowmobiling and snowmobile trails. Accessibility, diversity, and an abundance of planned travel routes. The first story we're gonna take a look at, we called the Connectivity Ride. On this trip, parts of our group started from the far-reaching areas of Ontario and then rode to meet in the middle. This story highlighted not only how interconnected the trails in Ontario are, but also how easily accessible they are no matter where you live. The beauty of Ontario really is that it's so big, but that it's so populated by snowmobile trails. So uh, most people in Ontario have the ability to leave from their back door and ride to any other point in Ontario by snowmobile um, over the course of a few days. You know, you really can ride from Southern Ontario to the most northerly part of Ontario in a couple days. So if you've got a couple saddlebags and some extra clothing, you know, you can cover the entire province by snowmobile on groomed marked trails uh, right across the province. And uh, it's a fairly unique um, aspect of Ontario in the snowmobiling community. This trip we're on now to Bancroft uh, is really a unique one if you think about it because we've come from some of the far-reaching areas of Ontario and of the Ontario Trail system um, from Ottawa which is way east and uh, Queensville Toronto area way south and I've come from Halliburton, which is sort of more west-ish, northern west kind of thing. Um, and we've all met in the center in Bancroft, uh, just, just have dinner and hang out with the boys. Uh, you know, some of us put on 300 miles to get here, others only put on 100, but uh, we can travel from anywhere we live to one spot, hang out for a night, and then go home the next day. And, uh, and it's, it's quite a unique experience to be able to do that. Ontario really has an asset when it comes to its interconnected trail system. And it's not just in the southern reaches of the province, it's basically all across the province. The cool thing about it is not only are there small local type trails that I can jump on if I just want to go for a half hour run, have some dinner and come home, but those same trails will connect to other trails that travel all across the province. I can leave my backyard and ride to Hearst if I really want to. Our destination of Bancroft, Ontario was more than just a lucky toss of the dart. Number one, it's midway between everyone's hometown, with Jeff's group heading out of the Ottawa Valley, Vern, the Snowtrack sales guys group starting out of Queensville, east of Toronto, and myself out of Minden. I have the shortest distance to travel. For me, this type of trip is the cool thing about the trail system in Ontario, it's interconnectivity. With the one-pass permit system, the money you spend gives you access to the entire network of trails, almost 16,000 miles of them. Plus, because it's all OFSC trails, there's a consistent feel about them too. With things like signage and grooming being pretty much the same across the province, along with the mandate of keeping access open and inviting to towns along the route, all this keeps the rider comfortable knowing they're on a managed, developed system. Story with Snowtracks TV. Northern Ontario Snow Train is a perfect example of some of the unique trips you can plan without ever leaving the province. There's also no better way to see the wild, untouched northern landscape of Ontario than through the windows of the train or the shield of your helmet. The Snow Train Tour takes place on the Canadian side of the city of Sault Ste. Marie in Northern Ontario. The train itself is stationed downtown and travels north through the Canadian wilderness, ending in Hearst, Ontario. The views really are, are what the train ride is all about. Because you're running along the sides of mountains and, and hills and things, you can see further than you would normally get to, even on a snowmobile. So uh, being able to ride the train gives you another experience to the snowmobile aspect and the snowmobile ride that is the snow train tour. The train is really a big part of it and uh, it was really, really interesting and exciting to, to be able to do that. 
the whole train ride on the snow train was was really amazing. I, I really enjoyed it. Just you know, hanging out with with friends and just you know, it was really relaxing, really laid back, um, and and the scenery. Just going through northern Ontario, it was was absolutely amazing. We decided to get off the train at Hawk Junction, which is a short 10-mile ride from the town of Wawa, Ontario. But there are many alternate options for the tour, including riding the train all the way to Hearst, which makes the ride back a full two-day journey. It's also possible to ride your sleds north and catch the train home. Being able to go for a whole day that's sort of relaxed and laid back, and then a whole day that's a real ride you gotta put on miles, it's a neat, uh, it's a neat comparison, and it's it's neat to be able to do that. It's been a lot of fun for the guys that we're with, relaxing and hanging out together, and then putting on some hard miles too. The day that we left uh, for the trip, it, the conditions at home weren't that great. It was it was raining and warm, and all the snow was melting. And but once uh, once we got further north, the rain changed to snow. And, uh, and then we found out that uh, up in Wawa they had a huge snowstorm. They had over a foot of snow, fresh snow. So right away I was really excited and, and I couldn't g wait to get there. I would say it's been a surprising experience for a Southern Ontario rider like myself uh, to see a different part of the province. The snowmobiling up here is second to almost nothing. Um, you'd be hard pressed to find better riding, particularly this time of year. So I, I'm a happy camper right now and, and I, I'm actually considering doing this next year, not for work, just for fun, coming up here with some friends and doing this ride because I've had such a good time. So uh, as a whole, great experience and one I will definitely participate in again. Home to the world famous Wyart and Willie, our next story takes us all the way to Owen Sound and highlights how diverse the trails in this province really are. From farmer's fields to rail beds, bush trails to riding the edge of Skinner's Bluff overlooking Georgian Bay, you really won't find more variety than you'll find here. The Grey Bruce region is located three hours from Toronto and four hours from the U.S. border. Settlers discovered the Bruce Peninsula in the mid-1900s and cottagers in the mid-1920s. There's a ton of fun you can have in, uh, in uh, Bruce County in this area. We're very fortunate to live in the area that we, that we live in. Uh, you know, we've got the Bruce Trail here, we've got snowmobile trails that are phenomenal and we get at least 12 feet of snow here a year so it's a, it's a haven for winter sports. You can expect to find miles of groomed trails and some of the absolute best scenic riding around. Trails that climb up the Niagara Escarpment and stop at Skinner's Bluff provide unbelievable views of Georgian Bay. Here, you'll see so many different sights and have so many different experiences, including visiting well-kept clubhouses that always welcome with an open door. Riding with friends is truly one of the best parts of snowmobiling. And this next destination is one I did only a couple years ago with a few of my closest friends. It's also a great example of a planned route and how accessible the trails are in Ontario. The Round Algonquin Park, or RAP Tour, is a three to five day journey around Ontario's best known and largest national park. While you're on this journey, you might feel like you're a long way from home, but the truth is you're never very far from the amenities you need. I actually live off one of the main RAP Tour routes and I've ridden a bunch of sections of the RAP Tour itself, but I've never ridden the whole thing as crazy as that sounds. So that's where we're headed. It takes about three to five days and uh, we're off on an adventure. 
Algonquin Park is Ontario's largest and best known national park. There are lots of trails all the way around it. And years ago, these trails were connected together and assembled into the Round Algonquin Park self-guided tour or the RAP tour. Since then, it's not only become an extremely popular multi-day trip for people from Ontario and Quebec, but it's also become a really popular destination for lots of Americans as well. And it's convenient for them because the most southerly point of the trip is really only about five hours from the Buffalo US border crossing. The southern part of this trip is also only about two hours from Metro Toronto, making it really accessible for people from the GTA. Um, and it passes through the cities of Pembroke, uh, North Bay and Bracebridge. So it's extremely accessible to the bulk of the population here in Ontario and in the Northern US states. The northern part of the trip was very remote and it was amazing. Just seeing how close you get to the Quebec border, you're out there. That's the, the thing I love about snowmobiling in, in northern Ontario is, is just how remote you actually feel and, uh, and just seeing nature like it's supposed to be seen. Even though you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, it's extremely well serviced the entire way through. So, you know, you're never very far from all the services that you could possibly need while you're riding. The one comforting thing was there was a lot of trail signs. The whole route, the whole way is really well signed. And also just the maps too. There was a lot of big, great big signs with the huge maps. And so if you ever sort of thought you weren't going the right way, you just had to go a little bit further and there'd be a huge sign with the map on it. And you'd be like, okay, that's where we are. And, and you know, there was no worries. Now that we're sort of on the last leg of the trip and we're on our way home, it's sort of like a bittersweet feeling. You know, I'm excited to get back home and be back uh, with my family. But at the same time, just the amount of fun that I had, you know, hanging out with, with my friends. You know, we don't get too many opportunities as we get older to hang out like this. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm kind of sad that it's going to be over. My favorite part of this trip was really just spending time with my friends and getting out into northern Ontario, into places that I've never seen before. And experiencing that with them was absolutely amazing. Just having the opportunity to do this kind of trip, I think made me a better rider and more confident. This just totally opened up my eyes as far as what Ontario has to offer to snowmobilers. You know, you get to ride really nice trails, stay in nice accommodations, and you know, you, you can't get much better than this. This is, this is what snowmobiling in Ontario is all about. After reviewing these stories, I certainly hope you've learned what we've always known about Ontario. Trails here are vast and they're diverse. And if they're not accessible directly from your backyard, you won't have to go far to find one. From pre-planned three-day adventures to simple two-day overnighters to trips through the untouched north, Ontario truly has something for every type of rider.